Hi, here I am outside one of Birmingham's largest Asian supermarkets. All these curries I've been doing for five years, nearly a thousand videos, so stay tuned, subscribe, like, share, comment. But finally, a video about essentials for setting yourself up in your kitchen to become a curry king. So this store is absolutely massive and I've chosen it not because I come here very often, but because I just know that we're going to find absolutely everything. So one of the main um, important spices is turmeric powder. That goes into absolutely every curry. I just can't think of an Indian recipe where turmeric doesn't go into when it's a savoury recipe at least. So another really essential spice, which is great for a perfumey sort of aromatic taste and a filler is coriander powder and then to go with your coriander powder and turmeric you're definitely going to need some ground cumin and just to finalize the four basic spices so you've got turmeric coriander cumin and chili so those four spices in varying quantities depending on your desires will get you basic curry powder so you can get chili powder or you can get Kashmiri chili powder which is very mild and it's made with a um, lower heat chili and it's also called Deggy Mersh and if you want something a little bit hotter you can get extra hot chili powder as you can see there and another essential is garam masala powder some people use garam masala to actually make dishes but garam masala powder is a mix of the more pungent spices and it's usually put in towards the end of the cooking process you know 30 seconds to a couple of minutes before the end and you put a good pinch of that in give it a stir and it really packs added flavor to your dish very aromatic and yeah when you step up your interest you might want to change things we've covered the basics already so whole cumin seed are really nice you can substitute whole cumin seed um, with the powder and you add it to the oil in the early stages and it seasons your oil and here we are we've seen the powder this is the whole coriander seed now whole coriander seed with the cumin uh, if you want to add um, a really special fresh aroma you can dry roast them that's optional in a saucepan for maybe 30 seconds on a medium heat and just let them cool down and then blend them and you get really the best cumin and coriander powder you can get so while talking about whole spices so this is whole garam masala so it's a mix of um, tejpeta which is cinnamon leaves as you can see there we've got some cassia bark some black pepper some fennel some coriander seed and that can be either blended up after roasting or just simply blend it or you can add, actually add it whole to the oil so whole seeds usually go into the oil in the beginning of cooking and it really releases their essential aroma or their essential oils so let's get on to herbs so this is garlic obviously I don't think that needs any introduction so garlic is um, you can either chop it up fine you can chop it up coarsely or you can blend it into a paste and that combines with um, ginger here a lot of people do not take um, the skin off the ginger they blend it and give a good combination that's how you get your ginger and garlic paste and it's a little bit laborious to make so let's talk about some alternatives when I'm making my own ginger and garlic paste I will use a ratio of 60% garlic 40% ginger and I blend it up with a little bit of oil especially in larger quantities because the oil will keep it sort of airtight and if you just simply use water it's good for smaller batches but it could go green which is harmless as an alternative you know in the winter in a lot of uh, southern Asian countries um, they use powdered garlic and powdered ginger if I can see any so there's the powdered ginger and you can just simply add ginger and garlic in powdered form which is not a problem at all it's very convenient actually and um, a lot cheaper so so much ginger and garlic goes into these little packets so it's all dried out so let's get on to the all essential chilies so the common chili you'll see here is the jawala chili or finger chili 
and some people don't use it in their cooking but you get a nice fresh acidic taste as opposed to the chili powder you can use chili powder with a combination of fresh chilies you can blend it you can cut it up into little pieces you can put them in whole you can split them so we've got some different types of chilies this is the more Caribbean or Scotch bonnet habanero type style chilies and these bird's eye chilies usually the little bit smaller ones are a little bit hotter then you've got like the bullet chilies which are really good as well all the way to um, you know Turkish chilies and things I probably wouldn't put in a curry in all fairness but equally as delicious so one of the most important ingredients is onions and there is quite a choice here so onions it's really important to cook them cook them out well get rid of their raw flavors the longer and slower you cook them for the absolute best they taste it's nice to brown your onions because when onions are brown they have that really warm moorish um, taste to the food and they're an absolute essential so you've got these spanish onions here that are full of water actually you've got the opposite here you've got actually very uh, painstaking to peel but you're going to get really good results by using these little shallots you know you'd be surprised when you go to south asia that people sit and pick the skin off these all day you know absolutely um, pungent with flavor as opposed to the very fast grown very uh, non-organic um, dutch and spanish onions so the good thing about uh, places like Birmingham, you can get absolutely huge bags um, of onions and you're certainly going to go through a lot of onions if you get into making curries. So just to round off the subject of onions, this is Mumbai Piaz. Piaz is Hindi for Indian onions and these are really the first choice onion. They can go up and down in price, but you can usually notice them because they're um, Pack it, pack it up like so. I pay anything from £1.99 up to about £4 for Indian onions. But they've got a really good sugar content, good moisture content, and they really give an authentic taste if that's what you're looking for. A really important ingredient is tomatoes. So if you want to do things really properly, use fresh, chop them up, they'll disintegrate in the sauce but there are so many alternatives as we'll have a look now so you can equally use tin tomatoes when they're chopped it's optional whether you blend them or not or you could use tomato puree or tomato paste anybody that's been following the channel knows that I use a lot of passata but the passata is very Italian so I won't find it in a, a very Asian shop like this so yeah you've got plenty of tomato options so tomatoes are obviously a real essential part of most curries South Indian curries tend not to use too many tomatoes which is interesting but North Indian you're going to need plenty of tomatoes so oil is really important it's nice to have a little bit of a sheen of oil in your curries oil is the transporter or flavour too, a little bit calorific but absolutely delicious so you'll find a good selection of different oils, which oil to use, it's really up to you. Um, sunflower oil, rapeseed oil is lower in calories and I find it doesn't saturate your food um, as much as other types of oil and gives a bit of a crispy edge on the outside. So a lot of restaurants will use kaiba ghee or equivalent and it's it's ghee which is clarified butter but it's a vegetable version so it's good for vegans vegetarians absolutely anybody can um, can enjoy kaiba ghee without breaking their dietary problems and then you've just got um, pure butter ghee uh, not really my type of thing but if you're talking about um, ghee which is clarified butter so you just get butter you boil it the curds and the whey separate you skim off the froth and you end up with this like purified butter which is um, really great for all your um, you know desserts and authentic Indian food but when you're talking about the king of ghee desi ghee so it's always a bit more expensive but well worth it if you're a ghee type of person and if you're into your South Indian food 
you'll see a whole range of coconut oil. So we've got 100% pure coconut oil, but that's probably one of the later presses. Think of it like olive oil. Got 100% pure again. I don't know what the difference is. There's a, a pound difference in that, but I recommend this. It's much more expensive, but you can actually taste the coconut in this. And this has got a very subtle coconut taste. This, you're going to actually taste it. And a little bit more expensive, but well worth it. So every now and then you see somebody a bit bizarre using olive oil for curry. I think uh, anything with a strong flavour should be avoided, you know, you should be trying to bring out the, um, the aromas of the spices. But then again, a lot of restaurants do use oil pomace, if I can see some. What it is, it's a blend of vegetable oil and olive oil, and it's usually quite cheap. And then, you've got certain uh, dishes, especially vegetarian dishes, with green leafy vegetables, very popular um, all over India actually, uh, mustard oil. So there's 100% pure mustard oil and you'll see that it only has, it has external use only because you know how the West gets all scientific and you know tests everything for um, food standards and that type of thing. So there was a bit of a scare a few years ago where they found that pure mustard oil has an acid that could be detrimental to your health. So people have been using this um, in Asia's defense for thousands of years and lived till well into their 90s, not a problem. Um, so this is for external use. I mean, people use mustard oil for polishing and varnishing wood. They use it for the hair. Some people even use it on their skin. And then uh, there is a version of mustard oil which says edible. But I can't find any at the moment, which is really surprising considering how much oil there is here. But all you've got to do, if you want to use the external use only, if you're really worried about, you know, the scientific emergence um, of this acid, without googling, I won't be able to tell you what it is, just heat it up to the smoking point for about 20 seconds, turn the heat down, you've got rid of the acid, job done, simple. So the five flavours of Indian cooking, one of them will be achieved, a little bit of tang, there's so many ways to get that tang into a curry. Lemon juice, lime juice is fine. This is really economical, four for a pound, it'll last ages and it does the job. Obviously fresh is best, but look how convenient that is. Um, some people use pickle, some people use vinegar, for, you know, like a traditional vindaloo from Goa. There's so many ways to get a little bit of acidity, but it is one of the five essential um, flavors of Indian food. We'll get back to the curries in a minute. So we're definitely going to need some rice to go along with our curries. You know, South Asia, there's millions of people, all different types of rice. Different regions have different rices, you know, from red rice, raw rice, pony rice, you name it. Idli rice. But I recommend 1121, longer than basmati, lal quilla, or anything. As long as it has 1121 or golden cellar, you know, Cellar just means parboiled, so it'll give you really super long grains and a little bit on the pricier side in comparison to a lot of the you know non specialist rice. But you'll get good results if you cook it properly, soak it for at least half an hour after washing it, heat it up in a pan, plenty of water. As soon as it comes to a bubble, simmer to a trickle, add a little bit of salt touch of oil, a little bit of lemon juice, and as soon as it's doubled in size, cook it for two minutes and drain it. And that's my little comprehensive guide. So we're absolutely spoiled for choice. We've got so many different brands of some, you know, all 112 rice. 112 is a hybrid of different basmatis. I think it was um, crossbred in the 1990s by um, two uh, people uh, in the agricultural trade. So yeah, 1121 basmati, but obviously try different rices, you get different tastes, textures. Some people just love a lot of rice that isn't the most um, well known, but you're never going to know it until you taste it. For example, this is very different. I've got uh, recipes on various uh, rice cooking on the channel. So we've got kilos of rice. <laughs> this is a little bit wilting, but this is fenugreek leaf. Uh, 
Um, it's used in a lot, it goes well with lamb, people cook it raw, they take the stalks off because they're bitter, but most popularly, in its dried form, um, we'll go and have a look now. It's dried form, it's called Kasuri Mati, which is dried fenugreek leaves as we saw. So you can scrunch that up into your curries, just a couple of pinches, and it really gives a nice aroma and uh, you get a unique taste to it. So if you're a newbie to curry, you definitely want to get yourself some dried fenugreek because it's absolutely delicious. Next, let's get on to gram flour, so which is chickpea flour. So essential for all your deep fried snacks, things like onion barges, that type of thing. It's used also for browning in a dry pan, for thickening sauces when you get a bit more advanced and want to try some more adventurous, authentic cooking. So it's cheap and it makes a batter very different to, you know, what you'd get on your uh, chip, uh, fish and chips or whatever from the chip shop. So yeah, essential for onion barges and pakoras, pakodas. There's a bad stigma about monosodium glutamate but all these things here are little packets of shan or laziza and they're ready-made spice mixes with MSG. The taste is absolutely moorish and um, very occasionally I will definitely try some of the biryani brands are absolutely delicious. As soon as you open the um, packet the aroma is just second to none. Sometimes I just make some rice add a couple of pinches of that in instead of salt absolutely fantastic but I don't know many people that don't love a good dal so dal just means lentil and there are dozens and dozens of different types chana dal which is chickpeas dried split in half after being shelled will give you a nice basic chana dal that you get in a lot of restaurants you have to soak them overnight a teaspoon of bicarb of soda will help the water absorption right make things a little bit easier and if you want something a lot simpler red split lentils you don't have to soak them you can just wash them and they'll be cooked within about 15 20 minutes so if you want to do things really hearty and patiently use make a lovely chana dal if you want curry in a hurry or dal in a hurry red split lentils are the go-to so you have also loads of things you can do with dried pulses you've got some chickpeas there so all the bigger um, types of dal need soaking so you've got some mung dal and urid dal that type of thing they all need soaking a lot of them can be roasted in south indian dishes but that's getting a bit uh, specific for this nice simple video that's meant to um, try and help people with their um, spice confusion so um, pre-fried onions here they can they're blended in certain recipes to make a paste you know all the work's been done for you it takes quite a while to fry onions but yeah put onto into biryani dishes nice and crunchy uh, there's not much left here and it's a bit wilted but fresh coriander it can be chopped put into a dish at the latter part of cooking because it takes uh, only a few minutes to wilt in gives nice flex of color nice fresh taste but usually it's for finely chopping and makes a fantastic garnish you'll see we have so many Indian foods so it's uh, so interesting to see so much food here Ooh, plantains my favorite two for a pound I get them for free for a pound <laughs> um, all in the same place here. I'll just let the camera roll and we'll talk a little bit about pots and pans. So this is elephant yam. So it's a yam, very starchy uh, tubular, tuber vegetable. It's meant to be very good for weight loss. Ginger and garlic mix, 79 pence each. We talked about ginger and garlic and how difficult it is to make your own or not difficult but time consuming it's already put into little pre-made blocks each blocks about a tablespoon and I've been using this for nearly a year now saved me hours and hours of work and it pops into the freezer 
can just take some out at your convenience I believe it overnight you put it in the microwave for 30 seconds and bingo so you'll always find plenty of dried nuts in Asian stores usually almonds and cashew they can be ground and put into pastes for dishes such as kormas, basandas so without going into like crazy detail you know there's whole spices like um, you know fennel seed star anise black pepper you know the, these are things you can get into using once you've mastered the basics and uh, I'm sure for every uh, curry fanatic you're already well using those and blending your own garam masala and that but look at the staggering amount of just lentils you know from black eyed peas to popcorn to every different type of dal you can think super healthy very cheap to make as well so this is atta or whole wheat flour been making chapatis for over 20 years they're so much fun to make easy to make i've got plenty of um, recipes where i illustrate making really nice uh, chapatis on the channel fortunately they don't come all come in this uh, 20 kilo bag you can buy little bags for like 2.99 that'll last a couple of months so atta flour for chapatis so a couple of things i think this uh, video has been quite long so you know yogurt if you're going to use yogurt use full fat the low fat stuff is very water based and could split and doesn't give you good results if you want a nice creamy sauce i'll skip the little bit about um coconut i was going to talk about the various forms of coconut because we all know that coconut goes in curries excellently so you've got coconut cream block which you can buy in the uk which is really convenient you can add a couple of tablespoons to that to a curry make it put it into your base gravies you've got powdered coconut cream which i use maggie brand you can just directly put that in the sauce or you can make milk by adding hot water giving it a mix you've got tin coconut which is already um like pre-made coconut cream powder and water if you ask me and it can be much more expensive so coconut cream powder is most economical so these are all handy they're handies they come handy for something don't they so it's traditional earthenware pot and the good thing about it is because they're not aluminium or iron they cook nice and slow and they impart a really nice flavor into your food it's very uh, traditional style i actually have a video of how you season uh, a handy for use so it doesn't crack when you put it on the flame so it's always good to have a nice selection of pots and pans in the kitchen some of them are pretty standard but you know if you want to get that caramelization on the side of the pan you're going to need an aluminium frying pan if i can see one always helps to have one of these as well um, especially when you're cooking outside it just keeps your pan in place that all depends so we've got some balti bowls here but they're not the proper ones they'll do the job but they're not the um, three millimeter pressed steel ones you've got a selection of these these are tavas we talked about at a flower earlier so this is a griddle pan a crepe pan um, you know this would equally be sold in you know latin america as it would in asia or definitely here in the uk just for um making rotis you know chapatis tava recipes where you know very shallow fried there's a good selection of them there i find these roti fry flames roti frames sorry i've had a long day uh really really um good that's a bit of a small one but what you do once you've um, finished with your tava, you can put your japati on a roti flame and toast it live over the flame. It'll puff your bread up and it's also good for Punjabi, you know, the lalit poppadoms that you don't have to fry. So roasting poppadoms, puffing japatis, an essential piece of kit. There's one at a decent size. Cake lifter, it's called. That's interesting. I've always struggled to... Musicless banjo, I've been calling it for some time. But anyway, so that about does it. So this is your spice dabba for putting different uh, spices in, all very convenient for the kitchen. You can just, you know, you've got a little spoon in there. You've got bigger ones, but to be honest, I use probably over 30 spices in my kitchen so I can never find a spice dabba 
um, suitable with that many compartments or I could use about four or five spice dabbers. So it's always good to have a range of um, presentation bowls when you're cooking Indian food because it simply doesn't look as good on the plate as it does when it's all individually portioned, you know. You've got your breads on one little bowl, you've got your onion barges on another bowl, you've got your curries all separate and it looks absolutely fantastic. So presentation bowls are something you'll get into, especially if you want to entertain your guests at dinner parties, show off your Indian food. I really hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something at least. Feel free to like, share and subscribe. Follow the channel for loads of like off the cuff, you know, impulsive videos that I find really interesting and hopefully you do too. So thank you very much for watching. Feel free to like, share and subscribe.